Ours kind of exaggerates, uh, as it's obvious. Um, you know, I, I, I was going to I was going to do a little exercise that I did in D.C. Uh, at the Open uh, Conference in D.C. And what what I did there is I talked about uh, names of Idar was my first cousin, and he's um, uh, he, uh, names of Idar called me in early 2000, and he was the Intel merger acquisition head at that time. Now, if you're in the in the valley, in the Silicon Valley. And if you're the Intel uh, head of merger acquisition, everyone's sucking up on you. Everyone, tell you. Everybody in the 2000s, right? There weren't the Googles around. There wasn't a lot of money in the Valley. And these big corporations, IBM, Intel, HP, all the players. And he calls me up and he says, uh, Zan, how are you? I said, fine. He said, man, Pakistan, John. And for those who don't understand Hindi, uh, that means I'm going to Pakistan. So I said, wait, 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 you know, I just uh, I just decided to slow down and do some things, and I'm going to Pakistan. So I said, "What are you going to Pakistan for? You know, those two buildings have fallen down, and we're responsible. It's, you know, it's not a good place to go." And he says, "Well, you know, have you heard of uh, Shri Shri Ravi Shankar?" I said, "Who the hell is Shri Shri Ravi?" He says, "Well, the art of living." And you know, he's uh, for those of you who know, art of living, of course, amazing, right? And, and so I didn't know about anything about art of living. And then I just I said, listen, art of living in Pakistan? <laughs> Taliban, you got it. <laughs> and, and he did that. He did that. He went uh, and he did that. And he was in DC and he, he's a yoga guy, art of living. He's also he went in Mobilink. He's one of the founders of Mobilink, of course. And then Bhatin, he just takes it with Bhatin in Pakistan. So you can, you can be an entrepreneur anywhere in the world. So, you know, uh, besides your fantastic pocket square, I think you did a better thing a good Pakistan. Now, you know, when, when uh, uh, Delauber, who's, who's a very close friend, uh, my first meeting with Delauber was, he called me up, he said, man, open car. Uh, I, I've, met, I've known him, but the first time he can only called me up in the valley, he said, Zain, I'm going to talk to you about something. He called me up and he said, you told me, forced me to become open president in, uh, for Silicon Valley. And these guys don't do anything. And I'll tell you what, I'm a Gujarati from uh, a Bhura uh, community, which is which is a confused cult. It's like the Arhani cult, but it's only more control. So, uh, and, and, I, and, 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 and by the way, I can say that because I was born in Kenya. Uh, and so this is our philosophy. And I'll say it in Gujarati, then I'll come back and translate it for you. All right? Potana jema se paisa nikalo. Nepotana <laughs> right. For those who don't understand that, it means take money out of your pocket and put it in your pocket. <laughs> last night, last night I had dinner. Uh, last night I had dinner with Etsy. Etsy is a Jewish lady from Israel. Next Tech is a company. They're one of the partners that we. Uh, every time Next Tech is an incubator, uh, they do companies in Israel, and then they open up companies in Boston, and New York, and Silicon Valley, and all over. And you know what? I was having dinner with her last night. And that's why I couldn't take the 3 o'clock flight. And I had some other issues also. And she had flown in from Israel to meet with us. And they're a partner, and they start all their companies. And you know, that was the first time she heard that I was a Muslim. And we've been dealing with them for over now two and a half years. Now, all, the, all the startups that they open in Boston, in, in New York, and in uh, Silicon Valley, guess what? Where they, we're also at one of my companies which does payroll, accounting, like Zenith, it's everything together. And all the contracts, we are the official contract provider to. There are almost 47 companies that they've got so far. And some of them are large. Uh, Zillow, uh, uh, Zillow is one of their companies and stuff like that. So we are the back end insurance provider for them, right? Now I'm sitting there and she says, uh, she starts talking about, so my, uh, when I first came to the US, people would ask me, where are you from? And I'd say, um, uh, Kenya, Kenya. And if it's an Indian customer, uh, meaning for somebody from India, would ask me, uh, where are you from? I said, Kenya. And uh, so, w but where? Where are you from? And I, started, and I can't tell them I'm from Karachi, I'm a Pakistani. And, you know, if you cut any winds, it's all Pakistani, even though I was born in Kenya. And, 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 uh, and, uh, so, 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 so he, so he, he the me and said, you know, and Silicon Valley, by the way, my, my entire career, from the age of 16 when I started my first company, is pure luck. Pure luck. But the tragedy is 
that all of you have that luck. You're all lucky. Can you imagine the people in the room that you're sitting with, that you can do business with, that need your help, but you won't take that effort of doing that. You won't make the effort of doing it. When I was 16 years old, I just returned from Cambridge, and Pakistan had, you know, there was this East Pakistan thing. By the way, I'm from grammar school, Karachi, uh, from the batch of Zardari and Murza Zaporto. <laughs> Two conflicts, right? Pinky, Pinky was a good friend, you know. And I'll tell you what: when when seventy one happened, we had all our, we had uh, industries in East Pakistan. We lost all our money, and and we were pretty tight. And shipping was nationalized. We lost shipping. I'm from the Tapal Jewelry family, and and we lost a lot of money. And we were really really struggling. I'd got a Levi's jacket with me that I'd come from England that I brought with me. This is a true story. And uh, one of my friends, Murtaz Hassan, um, uh, lives all over the world. Uh, his wife does all the work. He does nothing at all. Who is this guy? A good friend of mine. He said, Murti said, well, he said, would you a jacket try here? He brought us a jacket. I said, okay. We're pretty tight for money. I said, I'll send it to him. And I'll go and make a copy. So I went to my tailor and I said, is he, he, I want to make a copy of this. Can you make a copy of this? And they could plug it. Denim. You know, denim was unknown. In Pakistan, nobody knew what denim was. 1971, by the way, I'm pretty old. Um, so, so I looked at the denim, and he says, he says what, the hell is this? "What the hell is this fabric?" So I went to Asian Islamic son, whose so, uh, son studied in school with me in grammar school. I went to him and said, "Ye tent me se canvas thoda do. I just could dye karunga and Parker blue ink, which I did. It faded up a little bit, and I made a copy. Long story short, uh, besides Asim Zardari trying to." Uh, undress the models in the back in the fashion show that we held in Karachi in 1931. The first cat catwalk show in Pakistan was done by me. First. Uh, let, it be, let it be known that TJ's, the Nrijim Shay, who was also Grameen, started boutique six months after we did. We introduced ready made clothing in Pakistan. So the concept that you go around, you see hash garments and all these garments. Uh, Wranglers we brought into our uh, our uh, our backyard in our factory in Maine. We did a lot of stuff. 1983, so there was luck, pure luck. I needed a jacket, I loved it. Wanted to sell it to somebody. Went to a, made a co okay, copy. Luck, pure luck, timing. 1983, I, uh, 1981, I lost my first child uh, for recessive gene. Uh, died because the cells deteriorated after birth. My second daughter, Zainab, who just gave me a grandson, lives in Silicon Valley. And then my third child, again, uh, was diagnosed with the same problem. So we brought him, we had all the resources in the world. We were rich enough, so we brought him to the best place in the world, which is uh, San Francisco, uh, UC, Berkeley, and he, uh, and he died there. And he was buried in Los, uh, Los Angeles six months later. Again, luck. My, I lost my mother, my father, my son, and my daughter from 1981 to 83. And that's pretty tragic, and I'm only 26 years old. Right, so that's pretty heavy. I moved to Silicon Valley, 1983. Nobody knew or heard of Silicon Valley in that context as you know today. Again, luck, I ended up in a place. And so I was there with about $120,000 in medical bills. And so what do I do? Gujarati guy can juice like hell. <laughs> you know, how do I pay these bills? And I figured out that nowhere in the country is there a company that insures foreign nationals. So in, in Washington, D.C., and in Chicago, there was a guy called Ramesh Patel. He still exists. Uh, visitors, coverage. Everybody you know Ramesh Patel? I see him every time I come in here. He, I'm the only guy he meets with in the insurance industry, by the way. And I talked to him, and I said, and we created the first company to insure foreign nationals coming into the U.S. We, then what was about to happen is, and as CNN writes an article on this on me, and the absolute fabricated lie that I thought of this, and when I set up plan, I had a five-year plan like uh, you know some of these speakers do have. I had no plan at all. I just made a product. I made a product because my I needed it. And I started, went door to door and said, can you please buy some visitors in church? I had nobody coming in. He goes, can you buy some visitors in church? Nobody wanted to buy. Well, what was going to happen is cheap Indian companies were going to open in Silicon Valley that hire H-1 workers, which is a visa of three years permit, and they would not insure the spouses. The poor spouse would not have a social security number. Well, guess what? Somebody in a block, uh, uh, in a, a 10 by 10 office had created a product four years before that fit them all. Wow. So we just became a household name. 
Man, how do you break into big accounts? So I'm a, I, I'm a 70s guy, I love concerts, so I go to New York all the time to watch concerts. Uh, Air Supply and uh, all these guys that have already, you know, you wouldn't even know, your generation doesn't even know. So there's a company in New York, a small little company, startup called MetLife, I'm sure you've heard of them, right? So my, my CEO at that time, Zoe Brangwala, and I, uh, we were going to go to, uh, I told him, yeah, MetLife should sell this product of ours. He said, listen, our total revenue is $60,000 a year. They're a $120 billion company. You're going to go to them as an insurance broker and tell them, you sell my product. He said, I said, yeah, my consumer is I can do a tax right now. So anyway, I took that. So I flew into New York. I go to New York, and luck, pure luck. I'm in the elevator, and guess what? The, C the CEO of MetLife is in the elevator going up. I'm going to go and talk to them. No appointment, no schedule, anything. I'm in the elevator. And this happens to me every time, at least twice a week it happens, where somebody that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because I'm a strong believer that God, whether you believe in to be Jesus, Moses, Buddha, whatever, there's somebody up there organizing stuff better than the IRS or Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it happens for a reason. Donald Trump is running this election for a reason. If he gets, if he wins, there's a reason behind it. I don't know what the reason is. <laughs> God, um, but anyway, uh, and please tell me to shut up because I talk too much and I'm, the time will be over. All right, so I'll be done in five minutes. Anyway, so no, 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 sorry. Just tell me you're already over. Um, anyway, the b bottom line is, luck, all my companies, g uh, g we did, which was a travel insurance company. After that, we created the first company to do one-day event insurance. Um, my, I was looking for wedding insurance for my daughter. We opened up a company that today, then I got a call from Warren Buffett saying, I want to have dinner with you. And I didn't know it was Warren Buffett and I almost threw out the dinner. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. It's all luck, pure luck. My latest company, which does forms automation, is with a partner, a Google guy, Zane Khan. I'm sure you all have heard of Zane Khan. Uh, another fantasy story. So one of the things I, I would suggest you all do as Pakistanis, we don't do it as well as Indians do. I've got in India, you know, like the Lava is talking. I've got about 230 employees in India. And I tell you, I have only four in Pakistan. And my many dil say it umido take a minute in Pakistan no, India may know. And the way it will change. The way it will change if we are transparently honest to ourselves and everything I do, which means when your son picks up the phone, he doesn't do this. Apu, Jahweh sab ka phone hai, ab ghar par hai. What is this? Why are we this, this way? You go to, you know what makes Chicago different from Silicon Valley? If I'm chatting with uh, uh, Harris here and we're in Starbucks, a guy walks up to me and says, hey, my name is, can I join your conversation? I overheard something. And the guy would say, yeah, yeah, sure. My name is Mark Zuckerberg. Because they're honest. They're open. They don't give a damn shit about how much money you make, who you are, what you do, what color of skin you are. They'll work with anybody that's smart and good. And they're open. Pakistanis don't have that. And I'll meet the <laughs>